closing arguments, there's a special development that occurs. This is not an apocryphal story. Joe is at his house on Sunday night before the argument on Monday morning. In a, a, all of a sudden, he hears a knocking on his door. He opens the door. There's a big limousine outside. And Willie Nelson and Daryl Royal, for you folks who are younger, was one of the great coaches at the University of Texas, who were his big buddies. They came knocking. They began to drink, and Joe had been working on his closing argument. Now, there's two thoughts about this. The thought is that he either drank till 9 or he drank till 1 and never worked on his closing argument or he worked on it after 9 o'clock. I've read his closing argument. I hold with those who think he just drank until he passed out. <laughs> to, to say that Dick Miller gave one of the most forceful closing arguments that you can imagine. He hammered home the issue that there was no binding contract. He hammered home the uh, assert he had caught, in, caught Hugh Litke in a terrible lie during the trial. Um, he was forceful. He, was, he spoke for three and a half hours. He was as forceful as you could be in undermining Pennzoil's liability. Joe got up to speak, and uh, he told me he leaned against a table the whole time, which he did because I don't think he could have stood up uh, for very much longer. And he spoke, as some of us have, uh, with a terrible hangover. And it wasn't till the end, end of his argument, that he began to rouse the jury. If you send him out angry in a case like this, that's the only way you're going to get punitive damages. It's not enough to say they stole our oil. He had to make them, he had to make them very mad. And he made an argument that we should all think about. And he told them, as we all do, that the jurors are important to the system. He told them that they were big enough to stand up against Texaco. He had turned the Pennzoil as predator argument on its head. That was part of the argument, that Pennzoil were a bunch of corporate raiders and sharks. And by the way, they were. Hugh Litke was the first person in this country through Pennzoil to launch a hostile takeover. He did it six or seven more times. He swallowed up companies ten times the size of Pennzoil, and that's how they grew, by buying undervalued assets. But that couldn't come in. But so Dick Miller implied it. He said that hostile takeovers are the most evil uh, 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 procedures known to man, and one day they would be a crime. The jury goes out, and the first vote is seven to five for Pennzoil. Dick Damnier came close to getting a good verdict. But that wasn't to be. Uh, Joe had. I, you know, in a long case, my thought is that my own theory is that jurors should have their minds already made up. In a case that lasted five months, as this did, the only weakness in the entire trial, uh, I thought, was Joe's close, or when he was less than stellar. But John Jeffers said something that was so powerful. He said it was time to bring the, these New York bankers say agreement in principle means. And he talked about all the things that the New York bankers who had been on the stand said. All these bankers say an agreement in principle means this, it means that. And he says it's time to let them know that we're going to bring them in within the circle of law and ethics. They, were, they ran rampant over Pennzoil. They think they can do what they want. They win all the time. Whether there's a merger or not, they make money. And he was powerful. The verdict. The jury sent out a note after the second day asking for the definition of wanton. And um, yeah, I, 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 my legal characterization there is that Texaco puckered. And Dar Jamail, Joe's uh, son, told me a great story. He called Dar and he told him about the question, and Dar said in one of the understatements of the last century, I think you've won it, Dad. And the jury came back with a verdict of, uh, oh, let me back up a second. The jury came back with a verdict of $10.53 billion. With interest, it was $11.1 billion. Under Harry's direction, the appeal, was, uh, the appeal affirmed uh, the actual damages of $7.53 billion, but the court, 
the appellate court, uh, I think in, in a kind of a uh, mean-spirited way, cut the punitives down from three to one billion dollars. You can hardly get by on that. That's what sealed Joe's relationship with, with Brother Reasoner. <laughs>